coming up. The agency of the future. Ah, and I don't know if we let it happen or if it just eroded to it. That is true for the entire gig economy. What the clients want is one thing, growth. You have to be something that says, I can make that number grow. You're listening to The Pod Couple, where John and the Sodi and Barbara Lippert debate all things media culture. I'm Barbara Lippert, and I'm here with my pod pal, John Imasodi. Hi, Barbara. How are you today? Good. 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 Feisty, ready to bicker, ready to fight. get into it and snarl? Uh, maybe. Let's see. What uh, You have the okay. topic today. What do you want to talk about? Uh, the topic today is the agency of the future. Ah. You know, everybody talks about in the future. Right. In the year 2020. Right. Um, so, my feeling is... I have a very strong feeling that people need to be together in groups. And as a freelancer myself, you know, as a hermit hiding behind my door, Mm -hmm. I get really lonely. And I think it's important to have an office experience. And it seems like so many agencies are dissembling their offices and allowing people to work offsite or wherever they want. What do you think about that? Um, If we're talking about the agency of the future— the not well, the near future for sure. Right. That's going to be happening. It, it, it's happening right now. Right. Um, it, you really just get into a thing about real estate cost. I think, right. and, and you know, even now, uh, the near future, if you will, the, the trends are definitely moving more towards flexibility. Totally. And I, I think there are things that can be really cool with that. There, yeah. you used to have to kind of go in, and the whip was cracked pretty hard on be there at eight thirty, and and. Actually, if you were smart, you'd be there till seven or eight o'clock right. at night. Right. That's loosened up and in a good way. Um, because that gets impossibly restricting if you have a life right. or a young family or right. Yeah. So at our company, even we do things like that. We're more flexible with the time, and there are there are good things set up that people can work at home a couple days a week. Right. And it puts a little more onus on the managers and a little more onus on the the worker to stay in constant touch, but it can be a good thing. Right. And that's kind right. of cool. And and if you, even if you get like one day a week or two days a week at home, it you you, you sort of look forward to it and it makes the whole right. thing right. your whole life better. I would say the the agency of the future overall that I see, um, it's going to be anything that is faster, cheaper more common, if you will. Um, Exactly. Faster and cheaper are the bywords, and that's so depressing for people who like to do quality stuff. It is. It is. Because it's impossible to churn it out fast and cheap. Well, I think, you know, something's happened, uh, and I don't know if we let it happen or if it just eroded to it, but the power of the idea is just really a difficult thing for people to see or to sell anymore. Um, and we're still kind of relying on the old, uh, well, look at our work, and it's clearly the most creative idea, and we're really counting on these clients to basically recognize it and say, yes, it is, and it's great, but to not even know what it, it really does for them. And I think, right. I think there has to be something that happens a little bit more where we recognize what the clients want is one thing, growth. They really just want to sell more of whatever they make. And it's a stock market economy. Right. They really want that stock price to be elevated, which comes off hard numbers. And every quarter you have to make those numbers, whether it means firing people or shutting down stores or whatever. And and a lot of times on the retail clients, they can now look at their real sales hourly, minute, (laughs) minute by minute. Right. So unless you basically are saying whatever you are as an agency, you have to be something that says, I can make that number grow. And it can be the ideas, but an idea is is 
a hard thing to, to quantify. Sell. Yeah, and they also they're right. looking for the latest thing. You know, can you give me Facebook Live? Can you right. give me? You know, and right. they want these things done. They figure that you know their seven year old has a phone, right? And he can do things. So why why is it so expensive? Right, and I look at it on my phone. I look at it on the computer. Right, everything is really different. So. The agency of the future, the bad part of it right now is definitely going to be faster and leaner, cheaper. The things that you talked about that I thought, you know, I love too, that were yeah. great. The culture of the a, culture, a business. It's like being together. Yeah. You come up with ideas you wouldn't have otherwise because everybody in the group contributes something. Even right. if you don't think so, you're hearing it and it change, sparks something in your brain. And right. especially if... It's not all the same kind of people working there. Right. If you have different kinds of ideas and different kinds of cultures. And you have a culture where you speak to each other. I mean, I again, sometimes we talk about that we were kind of at the end, started in this at the tail end of the Mad Men era. And I can look back to some of the people I worked with. Some of these guys were, you know, now you're, you're old in advertising if you're close to 50. Right. Some of these people were in their 60s. But— a lot of like what I was able to learn from the business was really came from just being able to sit in their office, pick yeah. their brains, have them look at stuff. And a lot of times not just just as a boss, but as a friend or to, to hear the stories. And I think now it's like, first of all, most of these people wouldn't be paid to be around anymore. Uh, um, right. They'd be gone. And also yeah. there's just no training. Um, which is a problem, you know? It's because the we— The agencies don't have training. They expect the, the ad schools to do it, really. Well, I, I, I think part of the new agency model is while it values intelligence, it puts no value on wisdom. Right. And intelligence well, and is something— that is true for the entire gig economy and the entire world right, right. now, basically. Whatever is fast and new. Yeah. And again, it's just if you— things you can put a price on. I mean, intelligence is is something that anyone can give to somebody else, and and I get it. It's like, here's how you enter a, your password in a computer. Wisdom is the kind of things that are like, don't make the same mistakes I did, right? or don't make the same mistake this client did, and we can avoid a lot of things. This model has gotten rid of wisdom being a part of it. And, and that cost you a lot of money. Exactly. Mm. And you see these things and you think, how did it ever get out? Or you have to return your prize to, you know, can and right. all of that. And for people who've been in the business a while, they could see it a mile away. Right. And I think, so if you really got then to, again, talking about the agency of the future, what will it be? What should it be? Well, it'll definitely be cheaper. It'll definitely be in smaller real estate. I don't think we'll see these giant agencies of hundreds or and even thousands of people. And these beautiful offices furnished beautifully and all the latest, you know, and yeah. art and modern and but maybe, technology. But maybe what it should be is more to that. Yeah. Maybe it's a smaller, more specialized thing that basically does put a premium on the ideas, even if you change the name of it. Uh, it's no longer an ad agency. It's a business growth right. engine. If you're basically a creative consultancy that offers ideas that grow business, yeah. I think that's where there can be success. And it can come from anywhere. I mean, I know that there are pitches lately where, you know, huge agencies from Omnicom or WPP are in the pitch with one freelancer. Right. And it happened recently. It was a guy who was very well known in the industry and had worked at all the great agencies. And he won one portion of the business. You know, McCann won it, but he won like the breakfast portion of right. the fast food. So it's coming from everywhere and everyone can be a competitor now because everybody right. has their own tools. Well, that, that also begs the question that if you really want to be a new agency or something in the future, you're going to have to be a little bit more specific on what your pitch is and what the difference is. Right. And then, you know, hire to that or or go in and basically be concise in with, with what your model is. That it's like we take the idea from soup to nuts all the way from production or we we don't worry about awards. We worry specifically about sales. I mean, there's a, a lot of different right. ways Each to cut it. Each client needs a different yeah. kind of way of being serviced. Right. But yeah. just being all things to all people and counting on having, you know, hundreds or thousands of people, I, I don't I don't think that's Although, realistic. Although, I've got to say, though, that the, these holding companies are really doing well. And, uh, 
you know, they have, you know, thousands of employees. And it seems like, again, it's going to be the 1% right. or nothing. Either you're working in this giant holding company or you're working in a company of 10 people. It's a little bleak, but uh, again, I mean, everything changes and everything adapts. And yeah, I guess and the uh, fastest, the swiftest, the cheapest will win. Right. And there will be people, you know, I, I, I doubt any of us can point out exactly what the agency of the future will be. It will be different than it is now. Yeah. And it will probably be just like most things, faster, nimbler, quicker, and more focused on exactly. something. Exactly. Nimble is a word. I remember, you know, we, we, this old timer moment, but mm-hmm. um, Jay Shiat really started this, like, I think in the eight, late 80s or yeah, early 90s. Yeah, he was 90s, ahead of his time. With- he gave everybody a locker and a laptop and no one had an office. And they had to change that because they hated it. Right. They wanted a place to put their pictures and to feel like it was their right. little home. Right. So now basically he would say, well, then just stay home. Yeah. Because that's right. what's, that's what's happening. Right. So. Anyway, uh, interesting topic, and we'll never know who's right or wrong on that because it'll it, be the again, future. Again, it'll evolve, and it'll right. have some surprises. Right. Um, so with that, that's kind of a hot topic. Um, anything this week that seems well, hot I to you? Well, I want to say, you know, here I am in the the second town of my choice for the USA, Chicago. I love mm-hmm. it. And last night I was wandering around Millennium Park, the Bean, nothing beats the Bean, but— um, they had a free showing of Finding Dory. And, you know, normally wow. in the suburban towns when, you know, whoever does this and sponsors it, they put up the big, you know, these 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 screens with these, you know, like balloon-like mm-hmm. things that hold them up. This had 15,000 people there for a free screening of Finding Dory. Wow. It was just, Very and cool. it was like a Woodstock for kids. Right. It was so, it was a beautiful night. Everybody was enjoying it. A lot of adults were there. Families were there. All kinds of people. Mm-hmm. So I love that kind of civic free stuff where right. you can enjoy your city and you can get an outing out of it. Right. That is a good example. I mean, Millennium Park is is a really cool place, brings a lot of people in. And even more amazing when you've, you realize it used to just be a railroad yard there. It was kind of an ugly place. And the design, again, you know, Chicago's the home of such great architecture and such genius was put into the design there. Very good. Um, Okay, so for my hot thing, I'm going to stick on a Chicago topic this week too. Uh, You took the bright side. I'll I'll take something that, it's still a bright side, but about a dark side. Um, And I'd like to encourage people to Pick up the Chicago Tribune, uh, read Jim Cass if you don't get a chance. Jim's uh, one of the writers uh, that is inside the first page. And he does a pretty good job at times of, of kind of carrying on the, the Mike Royko tradition. The old newspaper town. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. And Mike Royko was a pretty hard-nosed journalist who, who wrote the book Boss, and he really took on the machine politics of Chicago. And... You know, now in a, a town that is is still pretty much a machine thing, uh, where journalism is a little bit not uh, yeah, n- not as it's fierce not supported, as it used to be, and they can't afford to have you know right. fierce reporters. But but Cass still has taken on some some pretty tough topics and pretty tough people, and isn't afraid to be unpopular. And I think. I think uh, it's a it's a good look at like what journalism can well, be. Well, long may he wave. Then I hope I hope yeah. his job stays. I hope so. Uh, hope because so too. major newspapers are cutting people every day. Right. Well, we'll see. That, yeah. There's a warning to Jim Cass too. I guess <laughs> <laughs> from another journalist. But anyway, well, it was good to see you again this week. Yes. Fun to talk the about the future and uh, Chicago, you. rich and poor, and good and bad. Exactly. But uh, we will see you again soon. Well, that was the great thing about the Finding Dory thing. People from all over Chicago met there. The park is very cool. I agree. All right. Well, thanks, Barbara. Good to see you. Thank you, John. For more Pod Couple, you can subscribe on iTunes. You can find us on YouTube. We're on Twitter at Pod Couple and on Facebook. And we have a website, thepodcouple.com. The Pod Couple is media experts John and Masodi and Barbara Lippert, produced by Eon Content Labs and brought to you by Epsilon. We see what others don't. All comments, discussions, materials, and information provided by participants in the pod couple are strictly their own opinion and do not constitute any official position or views of Epsilon. Please refer to our terms of use for more information.